Welcome to module one. Module one is a focus on some of just the basic fundamentals. There are two parts of module one. One is dealing with some of the financial basics. The second part deals with assets and liabilities. So I'm gonna be uh, covering first in this video some of the basics of finance. Now, what is sport finance? Sport finance is the ability to take numbers derived from accounting as to what's going on within an organization and taking other numbers that might be out there, uh, for example, balance scorecard uh, or other techniques that are part of financial accounting, as well as those from managerial accounting, to help make decisions. Those numbers that are derived through the accounting process help set a picture for an organization. For example, what happens with an organization is that they might set a budget for next year. They're going to rely upon numbers derived through the budgetary process to anticipate what the roadmap might be for the future. But they're relying upon numbers developed through accounting to help determine whether or not they in fact have met the budgeting process and if they are accurate or not. So I want to make sure that there's a clear line of demarcation between sport finance, sport accounting, and sport economics. Sport economics, for example, does not look at an individual organization. It looks either at a micro level or macro level at industries or countries or regions and tries to determine are people buying more? Are people in a better economic mood where they're going to be willing to spend more money? That can help the budgeting process because if people want to buy more tickets and they're in an upbeat manner, then you might anticipate increased ticket sales for the future. So there is significant difference, but finance, especially sport finance, is designed to take a look at numbers as a planning tool to help you reach your goal of financial success. Now, if we take a look at what is the primary reason you have finance, or why do we think of sport finance in the way that we do, is that people that run organizations need to make a profit. What is a profit? Well, it depends upon the organization. Even a non-profit organization will need to make money or they will not be able to keep their doors open. Similarly, a for-profit organization either has to make stockholders happy, and that means having a good return on the stockholders' investment when they purchase stock, and that could be either through dividends or through increase in share value. Uh, or they could be trying to uh, coast by and pay their bills like a lot of startups try to do and hope that a big payday is in the future. Regardless of what the issue is going to be, it's all going to be dictated based upon what are the goals of the organization. So finance is based upon goals. If the goal is to be able to survive for a couple of years until a product is launched for a sport technology company, that goal is going to be completely different than a mature sport organization, which might have to pay 2 to 5% a year in dividends, or they might have preferred... Uh, stocks that pay dividends, or they might have bonds that need to be repaid at certain interest rates. Those are going to be completely different obligations and requirements on the finance side than in some other areas. For example, nonprofit sport organization. A uh, college athletic department that's in a state institution might not have to uh, balance its books similar to a for profit organization. So you always want to take a look at what is the goal or goals of an organization as it relates to the financial future. Other things that I think uh, uh, might be important to understand in this introductory process that we're going through right now of me explaining what I think is important is to understand that finance affects every facet of an organization. It affects human resources, uh, and that could be how much you pay people, uh, what their benefits should be, uh, whether or not they should be paid benefits, it affects legal, whether or not you're going to settle a lawsuit or not, as an example, or what kind of contracts to enter into. It affects manufacturing, and if you want to do lean manufacturing, as an example, or Six Sigma, or uh, being black belt um, in terms of analysis of the supply chain. Um, it affects all marketing decisions. Everything nowadays is data-driven, and almost everything is finance-driven. And that can help uh, you understand and appreciate the process that much more, because it is in depth and it will affect every facet of an organization. Um, another issue is, is debt bad? Some people try running away from debt thinking debt is bad. You know, I shouldn't have any credit card debt. Well, if you can avoid credit card debt, that's great. 
But for a business, oftentimes the only way to grow is to take on debt, whether it's bonds, whether it's bank financing, whether it might be issuing additional shares, which is gonna be equity, um, liability and equity debt. That's the way you have to grow, you need the money. So if you're building a factory that's gonna cost you hundreds of millions of dollars, normally most organizations can't just reach into their pocketbook and do that. They're gonna to have to use finance as a way to grow. So we want to have from the very beginning this common bond that we understand that debt is not necessarily bad. When you take on debt that you cannot repay, that's when it's bad. If you make wrong assumptions about the debt and your ability to repay the debt, that's going to be problematic. Um, and so if we take a look at the various tools, we're going to be covering them in greater detail uh, throughout the, um, the class, but you're going to have assets and liability, revenue and expenses. We're gonna be looking at budgets. We're gonna be looking at um, different equations and ratios. Uh, we're gonna be looking at benchmarking. There's a number of key financial tools that we'll be using, all designed to help you understand and appreciate what goes on within an organization in their effort to manage finances more appropriately. Uh, one last thing before we go into the second part of this module A, and that is to highlight the concept of time value of money. Just like I just talked about debt as being important and understanding that, um, and then understanding that there are a number of basic tools that you need to have in your toolkit to successfully engage in analyzing the financial state and situation of an organization, uh, is to understand the concept of time value of money. Money changes in value. In the textbook we use, there is an entire chapter on time value of money. On the newest version of the textbook, I'm gonna write it without that chapter. I'm just gonna have a couple paragraphs on it. Why uh, time value of money is important, but it's also a very simple concept. A dollar today is worth more than a dollar tomorrow. And, and that's for a couple of reasons. One is because of inflation. Uh, another is because of the fact that if you have a dollar today, you can invest it and do something with it. If you have the promise of a dollar tomorrow, what if that promise does not come true? If it doesn't come true and there's no money, then that's gonna affect your organization. So time value of money is very critical to understand that, look at it, you know what? I'd rather have the dollar now than a dollar tomorrow. But if someone's willing to offer me a dollar 10 tomorrow versus a dollar today, and there's a very good chance that they're gonna be paying, that's 10% rate of return. I would take that any day if it's a solid uh, uh, prospect that they're gonna be repaying because that represents a 10% increase in value versus if it's only a dollar five a year from now and it's at risk, 5% might not be worthwhile for me to take that risk. So welcome to class. I hope you enjoyed module one and uh, now we're gonna continue with the second part of module one in the next segment. Take care.